I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied and today we shall discuss about the flow nozzles. You know that uh, in the context of steam power plant which is one module that of a module of this course that we have discussed flow nozzles are also very important rather these are mandatory components. Though if we try to recall in the schematic depiction of the steam power plant, we did not mention about the flow nozzle, but we had mentioned about four major components like steam generator, steam turbine, condenser and pump. So, if we try to draw the schematic of a steam power plant, and we can see the major components. So, you know this is the schematic depiction we have used many times. What we can see we can rather we started our discussion with the steam power cycle. Though we have briefly discussed about the basic thermodynamics which are important to understand the processes rather all the processes, processes which are there in the steam power cycle. We have also discussed about the steam power cycles, several cycles we have discussed starting from the Carnot cycle, Rankine cycle, modifications of the Rankine cycle and we have also discussed about binary cycle. Then we have discussed about the steam generator or boilers. Now before going to discuss about steam turbine. Today, we shall you know discuss about the flow nozzles. We cannot see the nozzle in this schematic depiction, but again nozzles are the mandatory components in the context of the operation of the steam power cycle. Try to recall steam generated the sole purpose is to produce steam and that steam when it is coming from the boiler is having high temperature and pressure. That high temperature and pressure that you know having high energy to be precise that energy should be converted into the another form of energy that is work. So, that work will be getting now how can we have this conversion? So, at the exit of the boiler steam which is being produced that steam is having high temperature and pressure. From that high temperature and pressure of steam if we look at the exit of the turbine we are getting again steam, but that steam is having low temperature. So, turbine is a device in which high pressure high temperature steam is doing some work and that steam is leaving the turbine which is having low temperature. So, you know and that temperature is almost the condenser pressure. So, basically temperature has dropped, pressure has reduced and 
at the cost of this reduction in pressure and temperature we are getting some work output. So, that energy conversion takes place in the you know in the turbine. Now, when we are talking about energy conversion that energy conversion takes place in two ways. So, at least we have understood that steam turbine I am sure that you all have studied about hydraulic turbines. What is done? Where these hydraulic turbines are used? Because we have studied that hydraulic turbines are used to generate electricity in a hydraulic power plant or hydel power plant. And we have seen that we use the energy which is remaining stored in the water and water is allowed to flow through a pen stock and finally, depending on the types of the turbines you know whether it is if it is an impulse turbine then water is taken through the nozzle before it enters the impulse turbine blades. So, basically stored energy of the fluid that is converted into the kinetic energy. So, here also when you are talking about steam turbine you know the energy which is remaining stored internal energy plus that high pressure and you know uh, that temperature that is now converted into another form of energy in the turbine and that conversion takes place following two ways. So, in the steam turbine this energy conversion takes place there are two ways first high pressure and high temperature steam is allowed to flow through the nozzle. Right? So, first steam is allowed to flow through a nozzle, nozzle is again a mechanical device which is having gradually decreasing area. If a device which is having gradually decreasing area in the direction of flow that is nozzle. If it is having gradually increasing area in the direction of flow that is diffuser, sometimes a device may have decreasing and then increasing area. So, that is convergent divergent nozzle. So, the nozzle is having convergent self that is the area of that device decreases in the direction of flow. So, when that high pressure and high temperature steam is allowed to flow through the nozzle you know at the reduction of that high pressure velocity increases. So, flow velocity increases right. So, what we can see that initially steam will be allowed to pass through the flow nozzle and while passing through the nozzle at the reduction of the pressure drop I mean at the cost of the pressure drop flow velocity will increase. Second is high velocity steam jet it is design nozzles are designed in such a way that while steam is passing through the nozzle there should not be any drop of temperature. 
So, temperature should not be allowed to reduce while steam is passing through the nozzle. So, you know there is no chance of having reduction in steam temperature theoretically. Now, when so that means, we are also going to get steam at the exit of the nozzle and since the velocity of the steam will be increased now we are writing steam jet. So, steam will come out of the nozzle in the form of a jet. So, high velocity steam jet is now allowed to impinge the turbine blades which are mounted on the wheel of the turbine what would be the consequence? So, when steam jet rather steam is coming steam is coming out of the nozzle in the form of a jet that jet impinges turbine blades which are mounted on the wheel of the turbine. Now, you have studied blades when you have studied about hydraulic turbines as well as pumps. So, blades are you know twisted. So, blades are not I mean blades are having some shape and blades are twisted. So, when steam jet impinges turbine blades and then there will be a change in the direction of steam. So, consequence is that after impingement steam direction will be changed. So, long as the change in direction uh, there then there will be a loss of momentum. So, when steam jet is coming you know st st steam is coming out of the nozzle in the form of a jet that jet impinges turbine blades and that jet will have deflection because of the inherent structure of the turbine blades. Now, when there is a change in direction of the steam jet, the jet will suffer a loss of momentum. So, I am writing steam jet will have a change in direction while passing through turbine blades. Then you know, then there will be or the steam jet will suffer from a loss in momentum. So, that means, you know that the momentum of steam jet will be lost while passing through the turbine blades. So, I mean you know that uh, nothing is lost that loss in momentum will be absorbed by the rotor I mean of the or wheel. So, that loss in momentum will be absorbed by the turbine wheel and that will produce torque. So, this momentum 
will be absorbed by the turbine wheel by the turbine wheel and the ultimate consequence is it will produce torque. So, which is producing torque? Torque will be produced by the steam jet because of some mechanical arrangement that means, steam is allowed to have deflection in its flow path and while there will be a deflection in the uh, steam flow that will and it is because of this reason steam jet will suffer a loss in momentum and that momentum will be absorbed by the turbine wheel which in turn will produce torque and it is because of that turbine wheel will be rotated. So, this is how uh, you know the energy conversion takes place inside the turbine. So, today just I wanted to discuss about how this high pressure high temperature steam is you know going through when the high pressure high temperature steam is passing through the turbine we are getting or we are having energy conversion. Eventually you are getting steam at the exit of the turbine, but that steam is having less low temperature. So, now what we can see that it is not only the turbine itself rather inside the turbine we also need to have a few flow nozzles and this is why I have taken this particular aspect today at the beginning I mean in the, in the beginning. So, that we can have fair understanding about the utility of flow nozzles in the context of the you know steam power plant. So, when steam is allowed steam is coming out from the you know boiler or steam generator that steam is not directly taken to the turbine blade rather steam is allowed to pass through the flow nozzles and then only that high velocity steam jet will be taken to the turbine blades and we have seen by how we are getting you know uh, energy conversion which is uh, taking place inside the turbine. So, what we can see that steam turbine is the assemblage of the flow nozzles and turbine blades. So, let me write here steam turbine is the assemblage steam turbine is the assemblage of flow nozzles and turbine blades. So, these two mechanical parts together is the steam turbine. Today, we shall briefly discuss about the flow nozzle. So, why flow nozzle is very important we have understood. Flow nozzle. So, that means, it is a mechanical device it is a nozzle through which steam is flowing. So, when steam is flowing you know that we need to have the analysis of that flow essentially to see because the entire objective of the flow nozzles is to have is to produce steam jet. So, if we draw the shape of the flow nozzle so this is the flow nozzle so this is the flow direction right. In the direction of flow there is a decrease in the cross sectional area. So, when the area is reducing mass flow rate will remain same. 
So, velocity will increase. Since the fluid here is the stream, so it is very difficult to say that the density will remain constant. So, density will also be varying when steam is flowing from one part of the nozzle to the another part of the nozzle. So, we also need to understand that for a given mass flow rate of steam, because that mass flow rate will be produced by the steam generator, if we take a particular nozzle, then what would be the nozzle area at the exit at its exit, so that we can get required velocity, which is very important. Because the steam jet which will be produced at the exit of the nozzle that steam jet will be now directed to the flow you know I mean it will be directed to flow through this turbine blades. While it is passing through the turbine blades first it will impinge. So, the impingement the rate at which it will impinge on the turbine blades that depends on the velocity of steam at the exit of the nozzle. So, you can understand the area at the exit of the nozzle also an important parameter to be looked at for the proper you know uh, or efficient operation of the energy uh, or efficient energy conversion that will takes place in the turbine. So, these are the flow nozzles. So, this is convergent type. So, this is convergent type. So, this is 2, this is 2, this is 1, this is 1. So, 1 1 that is inlet 2 2 that is outlet. There are two sections. Now, we may have similarly you know that divergent type. So, we may have divergent type. So, this is the flow direction. This is called just uh, which is opposite to the uh, flow configuration that we have seen in this particular case. So, this is divergent and normally you know that uh, we understand nozzle is basically having gradually decreasing area in the direction of flow. So, this is uh, basically this is the basic this is the typical shape of a nozzle. So, uh, but this is also we can say uh, diffuser because in the direction of flow area increases and we may have another one type that is So, this is 2 2, this is 1 1, so this is the flow direction. So, this is neither purely convergent type nor purely diffuse you know uh, uh, divergent type. So, this is called convergent divergent type. So, this is basically uh, I am not writing diffusion now. So, this is divergent type. So, this is divergent type and this is convergent divergent type. So, these are the different types. So, now let us consider the flow through a nozzle. So, we shall be considering the flow through a nozzle. I hope you have understand that you have understood that uh, the basic objective of studying the flow through nozzle is to know 
the velocity which the steam will have at the exit because that is important parameter and to get that velocity what would be the area at the exit of the nozzle. So, flow through a nozzle we, we take a few assumptions what are those we consider that flow through the nozzle is isentropic. So, you have studied it flow through the nozzle is isentropic that means, there is no heat transfer when steam is flowing through the nozzle there will not be heat transfer from the steam to the surroundings through the nozzle wall. So, basically if we consider if that is the nozzle we assume that this is convergent divergent type this is 2 2 this is 1 1. So, this is the convergent divergent type nozzle and we can see walls of the nozzle are insulated. So, there is no heat transfer and also the frictional effect is negligibly small. So, first of all there is no heat transfer isentropic. So, no heat transfer from the steam to the surroundings right. Number 2 is frictional effect is I, uh, I, I can say no negligible, negligibly small. While you are talking about frictional effect, internal friction plus external friction. Internal friction is friction between the fluid layers. So, when steam is flowing through the flow nozzle, friction between the fluid molecules or frictional of the fluid molecules between two adjacent layers. So, when there is friction between the two adjacent layers is neglected together with the friction of fluid and the solid wall is also neglected that is external friction. So, here both internal and external friction, internal friction is the frictional effect between two adjacent fluid layers and external friction is the friction between fluid layer and the solid wall. So, these two friction these two effects two frictional effects are neglected. So, this is number 1 number 2 is and isentropic process. So, uh, you know that is very important. Now, isentropic process. So, basically flow through the nozzle is isentropic and we have assumed that there is no friction. Isentropic process steam is we are assuming that the flow is compressible. So, flow of steam so we are assuming that is compressible fluid. Okay. So, we are assuming that that is P equal to constant that you have studied I am not going to discuss on this part. So, we can write P by 1 upon rho to the power k equal to constant. 
So, the specific volume I am writing in terms of density. So, this is the mathematical expression of the isentropic process. So, we are assuming we are modeling the flow like this equation in the using this equation. So, we have assumed that the flow is isentropic for the isentropic process we are mathematically modeling using this equation that is p y rho to the power k is equal to constant and this k is the index of expansion of the isentropic process. So, here let me write here k is index of expansion of the isentropic process. Okay. So, this is number. Number 2 we can write this flow is one, one dimensional right. So, we assume the flow is 1 d and number 3 is steady state analysis. Steady state flow analysis. So, basically these are the assumptions we have taken. So, these are the assumptions. So, these are the assumptions we are considering isentropic flow, no heat transfer, 1 D flow and we are going to have steady state flow analysis. And for the isentropic process we have mathematically modeled the system using this equation and mathematically model the flow scenario using this equation that is p upon rho to the power k is equal to constant and k is basically index of the index of expansion of the isentropic process. It, it, it depends on the so k equal to C p by C v. Okay. So, that uh, we are going to have. Now, we are if we stick to this particular geometry then how can we write the equations. Okay. So, pertaining to this configuration if we assume that normal to the flow direction area of cross section is A at the uh, we are going to have say certain cross section. So, if we consider certain section of the duct any section say if we take this is the cross section right. So, considering certain cross section in the duct and if we assuming if we assume that area of the cross section is a which is normal to the flow direction so we are we have assumed that is the cross section right say this is the cross section 1 prime 1 prime and area of that cross section is a which is normal to the flow direction. Okay. So, normal to the direction of fluid flow that is the surface area. So, this is a surface area normal to the flow direction. If we assume that you know rho is the density of the fluid. So, at that particular section assume rho is the density c is the fluid velocity h is the specific enthalpy. Okay. So, this is C uh, 
c is the fluid velocity, h is the specific enthalpy, rho is the density and v is the specific volume, small v is the specific volume. of the fluid at that particular section and z is the elevation, z is the elevation of that section from the datum okay. and p is the pressure right z is the elevation of the duct, p is the pressure. Okay. So, we have assume one particular cross section in the duct, we, have, we, are go, we are considering a is the cross section area of that particular surface which is normal to the flow direction. We have also assumed the fluid properties like rho that is density, specific enthalpy, specific volume pressure, we have also assumed c is the fluid velocity and we are assuming z is the elevation of the duct. Okay. So, if we write this, then what we can write? We can write, so from continuity equation, what we can write? we can write from the continuity equation is we have assumed that at any particular cross section those are the fluid properties that we have listed down over here. So, that means from this continuity equation we can write rho 1 a 1 c 1 equal to rho 2 a 2 c 2 equal to rho into a into c equal to constant because mass flow rate of steam is constant. So, you know if we take taking log both sides and if we differentiate it what we can write is. So, if I come to the particular uh, slide, so rho a c equal to constant. So, if we do the steps we will be getting d a upon a plus d rho upon rho plus d c upon c equal to 0. So, this is equation 1. We are considering, so this is what we have obtained from the mass conservation equation and if we take log both sides and we differentiate it, we will be getting this. So, this is equation 1. See, before I mean few minutes back, I have discussed that the objective of the flow analysis through the nozzle is to know what would be the area at the exit of the nozzle to get the desired flow velocity of the stream. And that velocity is essential because higher the velocity of the stream jet, higher will be the impingement, deflection will be more. and because the momentum that will be absorbed by the turbine wheel that will depend not only on the uh, you know steam velocity at which that uh, steam is impinging the blades also the blade angle, but it will largely depend on depend on the uh, velocity of steam that we are going to get at the exit of the nozzle. So, but there are several other issues that uh, we shall discuss. Now, question is if we look at this particular equation, we can understand that somehow we could relate area with the velocity of steam along with the steam property that is density. We have discussed that it is we are considering steam as the compressible liquid, compressible fluid. So, density of steam is not remaining constant throughout the nozzle. So, density will vary. So, we have also taken that particular effect into account while arriving at this uh, you know uh, equation. So, this is fine. So, our objective is to get 
velocity with area. So, what would be the area of the nozzle at the exit of the what would be the area of nozzle at its exit knowing the area at its inlet we can calculate velocity. So, we have to relate this d rho by rho in terms of other known quantities because the density will have continuous variation in the flow path. So, we know the area of the nozzle at the inlet we can design the area of the nozzle at the outlet and that is very vital parameter essentially to have the variation of the flow velocity. So, the density will change. So, now we have to relate this change in density with some other known parameter so that we can close this equation very nice. So, what we have seen? We have seen that P by rho to the power k equal to constant that is from the isentropic process. Okay. So, if we uh, you know differentiate it, we can write what we can write you know 1 upon rho to the power k d p minus k p by rho to the power k plus 1 equal to 0. So, we can write d p by p equal to into d rho equal to we can write d p by p equal to d rho by d rho by rho right 1 by k d rho by rho 1 by k d p by p equal to d rho by rho. So, that is another important equation. As I told you that uh, you know our objective should be to relate d rho by rho with some other known quantity. So, this is equation number 2. Right. So, if we plug in the value of d rho by rho in terms of d p by p in this equation, we will be getting the new equation. Now, we have also assumed that you know that uh, the analysis is steady state st analysis. So, if we recall the steady state steady flow energy equation, then what we can write? So, if we consider the steady state. steady flow process, then the steady flow energy equation S f e. So, this is a process and while this process is getting executed there is no heat and work interaction. Let us look at this particular schematic what we can see steam is flowing through the nozzle, but while the steam is flowing through the nozzle the process will be complete completed, but uh, to complete this process we do not have heat and work interaction. Because uh, we are keeping the walls of the nozzle are insulated, so there is no heat loss. Now, uh, if we write this equation we will be getting H 1 plus C 1 square by 2 plus z 1 equal to h 2 plus c 2 square by 2 plus z 2 right that we can write. I can write uh, 2 g 2 g because I did one mistake. So, this is the equation right. So, h 1 plus c 1 square uh, by 2 plus g z 1 sorry here I can write like this. plus g z 1 plus g z 2 sorry. Now, what we can? So, this is the equation. So, from there because in absence of heat and work interaction. So, I am writing over here steady flow energy equation in absence of work and heat interaction. Work and heat interactions. Mind it while writing this equation we have considered the work which is needed to maintain the flow in the presence of pressure that is 
you know we have taken into account. So, this is what I have this aspect I have discussed when I have discussed when I have you know discussed about the basic of the basics of the thermodynamics which will be required to understand the you know rather we shall be recalling those aspects frequently while discussing several aspects of different modules of this course. But while writing this equation we have taken into account the work done which is needed to maintain the flow because there will be continuous flow through this uh, you know uh, convergent divergent nozzle or the fluidic channel. So, to maintain the flow continuously the work is needed and that work that expression is already taken into account in this equation. So, this is what we are writing in absence of work and heat interaction that is work between system and surroundings and heat interaction between system and surroundings. So, if we trivially ignore the elevation change. So, when the elevation change is neglected, because if the nozzle is not you know kept in a vertical configuration or nozzles are you know all tried to keep in a configuration which is having a uh, inclination angle very small. So, for that case we can trivially ignore the change in elevation. So, we can write h 2 minus h 1 that is we can write d h plus c d c equal to 0. So, h 2 minus h 1 or h 1 minus h 2 that is d h plus c 2 square minus c 1 square by 2. So, basically we can write that is C d C. If we integrate this equation, we will be getting this one. So, d h plus C d C equal to 0. So, that is the another equation because we are trying to relate velocity with other properties. See, if we already mentioned the properties that is density, fluid velocity, specific enthalpy, specific volume and the pressure. So, this is what we have written because this again you have to keep in mind that this is the flow of a compressible fluid through a duct having gradually increasing or gradually varying area. So, this is what we have written. Now, what we can next do is we can write the property relation I mean for any process we can write for any process we can write this property relation T d s is equal to d h minus V d p right that we can write and this is the property relation. So, we can write that is equal to d h minus d p by rho. Now, we have assumed that isentropic process. So, isentropic process if we consider now isentropic process that means, d s equal to 0, there is no change in entropy. So, we can write from that d h equal to d p by rho. So, if we write if we place this expression d h equal to d p by rho in equation this equation 3 then what we are getting. So, we are getting you know uh, we are getting d p by rho plus c d c equal to 0 that is what we are getting d p by rho plus c d c equal to 0. Now, what we can write it that uh, just to have some kind of uh, manipulation we can write d p by rho c square plus d c by c equal to 0. So, we are dividing by c square and then we can write this equation. Why you are doing so? Now, question is because we are talking about the flow through a duct which is having gradually varying area initially decreasing then increasing right. So, it is again uh, the flow scenario of a compressible fluid. So, we know what is Mach number. So, Mach number is basically defined as the ratio of velocity of fluid 
at any particular section at any particular pressure and temperature uh, temperature of course, velocity of fluid at any particular section at any particular temperature to the local sonic velocity at that section at that temperature. So, so velocity Mach number is velocity of fluid at any particular section at any pressure and temperature to the local sonic velocity at that particular section at the same pressure and temperature. So, m equal to C y a and you know what is a local sonic velocity that is you know this a equal to under root k into that is very trivial to understand because you all ha have studied it k p by rho. So, that is k p by rho. So, you know that if we write basically that means, we can write m square equal to c square by a square that is rho c square by k into p. So, this is p k p by rho. So, what we can write from here is rho c square equal to m square into k into p this is p p. So, we can write we can write d p by rho c square plus d c by c equal to 0 and we can place d p rho c square equal to k p into m square k p into m square plus d c by c equal to 0. So, this is the equation that we are getting right. If we if we just uh, uh, write it we can write d c by c equal to minus 1 upon k m square d p by p. So, this is again one term. So, if we go back to the equation 1. So, see d c by c we, have, we got expression and that is 1 upon k m square into d p by p right. So, what is d rho by rho? d rho by rho we also got 1 upon k d p by p. So, if we try to write all these equations and then we can relate the area of the flow nozzle in terms of the known quantities. So, what we can do? We can plug in the value of d rho by rho from equation 2 into equation 1. We also can plug in the value. So, this is 3 this is 4 and this is 5. So, if I write over here, so putting the expression of d c by c equal to minus 1 upon k m square d p by p and d rho by rho equal to d rho by rho equal to 1 upon k d p by p in equation 1. What we can write? We can write d a by a we can write d a by a. So, this is the equation d, rho, d a by a what is d rho by rho? d rho by rho equal to 1 upon k d p by p and then we are having d c by c. So, we can write it minus 1 upon k m square d p by p equal to 0. So, if we try to just uh, write this write this term we can write d a by a equal to d p by p into 1 upon k m square minus 1 upon k. So, that means, finally, we can write that d a by a equal to what we can write 
1 upon k d p by p into 1 minus m square divided by m square. Right? So, this is the relation we wanted to derive in today's class. This is very important equation relation. So, one we, we can understand. So, this is equation number 6. So, this is the equation we wanted to derive in today's class because we can see though we could write you know d c by c in terms of this quantity d h you know d rho by rho using this quantity finally, we have written d a by a using the expression of d c by c and d rho by rho in this form and the quantities which are there in the right hand side are known, because you know that we know the Mach number and this k is also known, because that is index of expansion of the isentropic process and we also know what is the pressure drop that we are going to have. So, basically if we know the m then probably we also know the velocity of fluid at any particular section as compared to the velocity local sonic velocity at that section given the pressure and temperature same. So, basically using this relation we can find out what would be the area at the exit of the nozzle to obtain the velocity which is needed knowing the drop in pressure and also the index of expansion of the isentropic process. So, the physical significance of this equation is tremendous that we shall discuss considering several cases and that part we shall do in the next class. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.